Hi everyone and welcome to another Footwork Facebook Live event brought to you by Footwork Podiatric Laboratory. My name is Arthur Moliszewski, I'm the founder and the managing director of this uh, company and today we are going to be talking about foot orthosis for plantar heel pain. Okay? Plantar heel pain is probably the most common condition seen by a podiatrist in their practice, whether that's public or, or private. Um, and plantar heel pain can be caused by a number of things. In the past, we used to refer to it as plantar fasciitis, specifically pain in the heel. However, recent studies have shown that um, it's not actually a fasciitis type condition, it's not an inflammation type condition. Um, it is more the thickening of the plantar fascia. The, what causes the pain is not really widely understood, but what we do know is there are a number of things that we can do in order to treat the symptoms and make your patient feel better. So some of the things that could cause plantar heel pain, some of the most common conditions that could cause plantar heel pain, are basic heel bruising. So been standing for a long time on concrete, a sporting injury, um, contusion. Um, the other thing, one of the more common conditions is, is the entrapment of the medial calcaneal nerve, which can also result in plantar heel pain. But the most common condition that we see is caused by plantar facial thickening. Now, studies done by Andrew McMillan and Carl Landorf out of La Trobe University have shown that an increase in the thickening of the plantar fascia by four millimeters is more likely to result in, the, in pain in the heel by 105 times, which is quite significant. So what can we do about it? So the number one aim is to actually offload the area of the heel that is affected. And in most cases, it is the area around the insertion or the origin of the medial slip of the plantar fascia or around the mid-cal tubicle. So two, con two things we have to look at. Number one is what's actually causing it. And it is thought that the cause of the heel pain in this case is actually overpronation or plantar flexion of the uh, calcaneus, which then traps or squeezes that area and causes results in pain. So we have to offload it. Secondly, there are mechanical consideration to reduce the overpronation and improve foot function. So number one, some of the things with custom made orthoses that we're gonna look at is how to actually offload the area of the mid-cal tubicle. Now, in the past, what one of the most common, condi one of the most common modifications that used to be asked is a simple sweet spot or a, an aperture through the heel. But as a manufacturer, what we have found is that these orthotics used to come back fractured on the medial side simply because it wasn't strong enough. It actually weakened the shell. And by weakening the shell, we then also lost function in the shell. Secondly, if we wanted to actually do an aperture through the heel and we had a heel stabilizer or post, particularly a milled one, it was very difficult to do. So what we've come up with, and we've discussed this in the past, is a sweet spot. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's an area which we can actually mark around the heel and it actually is significantly depressed in that area. And the podiatrist can actually indicate that on their scan or on the cast or whatever modality they use to take the patient's impression of the patient's foot. They can indicate the area, whether it's there or slightly more proximal or slightly more distal. And we can shift that to actually offload the painful area um, of the foot. Secondly, we need to spread the weight around the heel as much as possible. So again, this is a concave wedge device um, where the heel cup is very or extremely low. It is great for shoe fit, but with uh, plantar heel pain, it doesn't help very much because we want to spread the weight around the heel cup as much as possible. So in a chronic case, or sorry, in an acute case, what we actually recommend is a slightly deeper heel cup. So number one, we are spreading the weight around the heel. But secondly, the theory also goes that by squeezing the heel medially, laterally and posteriorly, we're actually pushing the fat pad further plantarly down to the bottom and creating the patient's own um, cushioning effect. Secondly, we want to look at a really good arch contour. So again, anything that will offload the heel and an increase in the arch contour will actually offload the heel. Thirdly, by shifting some of the pressure further away from the heel, by changing your arch design, 
slightly more distally can help to offload. However, some people may find that, that that actually can reduce correction or control of the device itself. So some people have their own thoughts on it, but we tend to find that by shifting it further away does reduce some of the symptoms. The combination of the actual sweet spot as well as shifting the pressure away and increasing the arch height, which would normally be a minimal arch fill request on our prescription form, all add to reduce the symptoms of the actual um, heel pain. Thirdly, as far as stability is concerned of the device, we need a heel stabiliser. Without the heel stabiliser, um, the device will rock around, move around and will reduce its effectiveness. But the heel stabiliser can actually feel hard for the patient. So we've come up with a modification or started introducing a modification. You can probably see a little shave on there where we actually grind a four degree angle into the orthotic itself thus allowing it to slightly collapse or slightly pronate, if that's a term, giving it a softer feel. So, uh, another good point to remember, um, or uh, a point that you might have to consider, is actual plantar fascial accommodation in the shell itself. By stretching or increasing the tension on the plantar fascia, although it has been shown that it's not such a thing as plantar fasciitis or tensile fasciitis, but we found that by introducing or incorporating a plantar fascial accommodation also reduces the symptoms. It also, what it also does is stops the plantar fascial slip from being stretched over the orthotic shell and thus improving um, the function of the first ray. Now, having spoken about first ray, we also want to make sure that the first ray gets clearly plantar flex and we don't inhibit first ray function. Again, one of the features that we want to look at is improving foot function, stopping the overpronation. One of, one of the most important things is allow for first ray function and generation of the windless mechanism. So we have a modification called a first ray accommodation. To those of you who don't use us, it actually looks like a small first ray cutout or first MTPJ cutout. In actual fact, what we've done is dropped the surface of the shell much lower at the distal part or under the first metatarsal and brought the post back medially giving it an appearance of a first ray cardiac, but functionally it is actually balanced and the orthotic doesn't rock. So it's a much more stable device. On the lateral side, the heel cup is slightly higher, again, spreading the load, spreading the weight, squeezing that fat pad so we can push it plantarly, but then we're actually loading the foot up on the lateral column with the aid of a cuboid notch. Again, we'll mark it out. With the aid of a cuboid notch and even a plantar fifth-ray grind, which help to lock up the mid joint again to promote the windless mechanism, improve foot function, and offload the area of the mid tubicle or plantar heel pain. Okay? Now, some of the things that we see that podiatrists ask for and have trouble with, and we have to um, sometimes remake devices, are uh, modifications such as a medial heel scope. Now, medial heel scope is quite often used to increase correction in the rear foot. However, it is a contraindication we found with plantar heel pain because it puts direct pressure onto that, onto that area. Um, Blake inverted devices or wedge style devices are likewise the same because they will increase pressure on the heel. So we want to take as much of that pressure away rather than increasing it. I've mentioned concave wedge devices. Now, they do have a purpose in, in treatment of plantar heel pain, but more of a long-term purpose. So if the patient comes to you with the acute stage where you want to hit it with everything that you have, so give them a device that may require to be a slightly bulkier device that they can fit into most of their shoes. And this they might have to wear until the symptoms settle down. But then what they'll find is that they want to use shoes that are slightly more fashionable slightly lower, slightly lower profile, and they can't fit that device in, so they stop wearing it, the symptoms come back. So such a case, quite often, we'll make a second pair, which is lower profile, um, can fit into the device, into the shoes a lot more, into a lot more shoes that they're wearing, and we find that that stops the symptoms from coming back. Um, so when you're treating with heel pain, sorry, I've lost my train of thought there for a sec. Um, just looking at some of the messages coming through. Thank you for everyone for joining us. Looks like we've got a number of people, 44, 48, number is jumping around. So when you're treating heel pain, be considerate of the actual patient and what they're doing and 
what the physical activity is. So if, if they're standing for a long period of time, you may need to look at something that's a little bit more um, chunkier than they'll fit into their shoes. Studies have also shown that um, shock absorption is not a big consideration when it comes to um, treatment of plantar heel pain. So therefore, a softer device that will not necessarily help as much as some people may think because people may consider a softer device simply because they want something softer under the foot because it's, it's sore. Um, it's more the squeezing, the offloading mechanism that is far more effective in treatment of this condition. Okay? If you have any questions regarding today's topic, please feel free to post those questions on, our, or, or on the post or onto our Facebook or send us an email at info at footwork.com.au and we'll be more than happy to share some more thoughts and ideas with you in the future. Again, thank you for watching and hope that you will join us for our next episode in the next few weeks. Thank you.